Hello everyone. So in this video, we are studying a rectangular loop of wire with a length of 2.2 uh, centimeters, width 0.8 centimeters, and a resistance equal to uh, 0. Um, 0 0.4 milliohms. So uh, we want also this this loop is placed near an infinitely long wire that is carrying a current of 4.7 amperes and the loop is then moved away from the wire at a constant speed v equals 3.2 millimeters per second when the center of the loop is at a distance of 1.5 b so we are given this center of the loop to be at a distance of 1.5 b we want to find the magnitude of the magnetic flux in the loop so we are interested in finding the magnetic flux um, of course there will be a flux here due to a magnetic field that is induced by the current carrying wire here so this wire is going to generate a magnetic field of circular field lines of course and this magnetic field uh, remember this magnetic field has an expression of mu zero i over 2 pi r so the straight wire um, generates a magnetic field of magnitude okay sorry about that b equals mu zero i over two pi r and note this term here r means that b decreases the further we get from the straight wire and then an important thing that we need to notice is that b is not uniform b changes with position and so in order to to find the flux we will actually have uh, we will actually have to um, consider integrating so when we have a non-uniform magnetic field the expression for the flux will be actually integral of b dot da and we need to consider some kind of infinitesimal area to integrate over uh, let's go back to our drawing to see what kind of infinitesimal area can we consider um, we can see here that the magnetic field will change the further we go from the wire but if we are studying um, points on the same horizontal line these will will have the same magnetic field because they are all at the same distance from the wire so it's a good idea to consider um, a horizontal strip located at a position r at the center of our loop and it has a width dr and a length equal to a which is the length of our wire so we are considering Um, a horizontal strip of area dA which will be equal to A times dR where A is the length of our loop so now we can write phi as an integral of B we know that B is mu zero I over 2 pi R times a dr let's take all the constants to the outside so this will be mu zero i a over 2 pi and an integral of 1 over r dr 
and this will obviously give us a len of r. Of course, r here varies between two limits, which are this point and this point. So if the strip is at a location r from the wire, then uh, if we want to integrate, we will integrate from here, which is the position r minus b over 2. And this position here is r plus b over 2. And these will be the limits of our integration in order to get the flux passing through this whole loop. So this will vary between r minus b over 2 and r plus b over 2. If we substitute, we're going to get this final expression for the flux, which is lin r plus b over 2 over r minus b over 2. Uh, of course, this is obtained using the formula lin b minus lin a is equal to lin b over a. Um, so we, we want actually the flux um, when the distance is 1.5b. So now we can substitute r to be 1.5b and this will give us a flux of mu0 ia over 2 pi ln 1.5b plus b over 2 over 1.5b minus b over 2. Uh, okay, this will actually just give us um, this e, uh, this is going to give us just lin2 actually. So, uh, and if we substitute the values here, mu is 4 pi times 10 power minus 7. Uh, the current was 4.7 amperes. The length of our square is, let's get back to our uh, rectangular loop. Its length is 2.2 centimeters which should be written as 0.022 meters divided by 2 pi and here we have ln 2. The final answer will be 1.4 times 10 power minus 8 Weber. So this is, an exp this is the value of our flux at a distance of 1.5 b. Uh, the second part is asking us for the current induced in the loop. So to find the current induced from the obtained flux, we should actually first think about finding the induced EMF. So to get I induced, we need E induced. And then we can actually uh, find I induced by saying it's equal to, to the induced EMF divided by the resistance of, of our loop. Because we can see here, um, this rectangular loop has a resistance of 0.4 milliohms. So we can relate the induced current to the induced electromotive force using Ohm's law. Now, uh, of course, we, uh, we see that uh, to find the induced electromotive force, we need to remember the formula, which says that E induced is minus d phi by dt. Uh, Okay, we have phi. We do not, uh, for our expression of phi, um, which we obtained from part A, we know that phi is equal to mu0 ia 2 pi ln r plus b over 2 over r minus b over 2. This is our general expression. We substituted the value of r to be 1.5b. However, here we need to pay attention before we use this value of r, we need to check if there's a dependence of time. And we do have a dependence on time here because actually r here depends on time, this position. So we have to pay attention that when we derive the flux with respect to time, this r will have a derivative with respect to time. And actually, the derivative of r with respect to time, this is going to be giving us the speed. Okay, so um, we have to do a derivative now in order to find um, the value of the induced electromotive force. Now, let's see what we need to do. If we substitute for the induced electromotive force, we will notice that E induced will be d by dt. Let's, let's study the magnitude, so I will not write the minus sign. So this is d by dt of mu0 ia over 2 pi ln r plus b over 2 over r minus b over 2. 
I will take the constant to the outside. And what remains is a derivative of a limb function. And the derivative of a limb function is the derivative of the function itself divided by this function. Uh, where here the function is r plus b over 2 over r minus b over 2. If we look for the derivative of this function, this is f prime, uh, we are considering here a fraction. So this is a derivative of a fraction. And for a fraction, so if f equals a over b, f prime is going to be a prime b minus b prime a over b squared. So we need to apply this to find the derivative. So if we look for a prime, this is the derivative of the numerator, this is going to be r prime, into b, which is the denominator. So I'm considering this whole thing to be a and this whole thing to be b. So this will be r minus b over 2. And uh, minus b prime, which is also r prime, into a, which is r plus b over 2. And here we have b squared, which is r minus b over 2 squared. So this is f prime. And uh, we can actually just expand this and solve it. Uh, we will get, of course, we can substitute r prime by v. We're going to get v into r minus b over 2 minus r minus b over 2 over r minus b over 2 squared. So this is going to be actually minus b times v over 2 into r minus b over 2 squared. So uh, we get this expression for um, for f prime, and we still have to divide actually um, f prime over f to get the derivative of this ln function. Actually, there is no 2 here. Okay, so now we can find the derivative of our ln function by just dividing f prime by f and this will be minus bv over r minus b over 2 squared divided by f itself which was r plus b over 2 over r minus b over 2 and our final expression will have minus bv over r squared minus b squared over 4. So this is our expression for the ln of the function. And now all what we still have to do is um, substitute this in the expression of the induced current and try to find um, the induced current. So we know that i induced is uh, e induced over the resistance. Here we're talking about the magnitude with no minus sign. So if we look for the induced electromotive force, we said it's equal to mu zero IA over two pi times the derivative that we just solved, which is BV over R squared minus B squared over four over the resistance. So this will give us mu zero i a over two pi r. Um, this is capital R for the resistance times b v over r squared minus b squared over four. This is our final expression for the induced current. And now all we have to do is just substitute everything here. We have all.